It's so good to see you finally. In my world as a CSI, I collect all the evidence and submit it for testing. Once it gets passed over to Cami and the team at Sorensen Forensics, one of the most renowned DNA labs in the country, it goes through a detailed process before we get the results. Sorensen Forensics is a forensic DNA testing laboratory. We're majority doing homicides and sexual assaults, so we do hundreds of homicides within a year. We get a lot of just the bulk evidence, whether it's clothing or bedding. So trying to find that stain is so key to the success of the DNA testing. This is interesting. Crime scene investigators are really the first responders. Our job is not necessarily to solve the crime. We really are like this assistant to the investigation. Here we've got a really weak blood stain, but it always has that little halo um, of a border. Once we've identified a biological stain or cellular material from a item of evidence, we will do our DNA analysis. The first step is extraction, where we are breaking open the cells uh, to gain access to the DNA. And so the fact that the liquid's now turned that kind of reddish brown, that blood stain has lifted off of the sample itself. The second step is quantification, where we find out how much DNA we have to work with. The quantification will also help us decide whether or not we should continue on with testing. If you don't have enough DNA. Absolutely, and okay. you're probably familiar Yeah, I'm with, familiar with, with it, it's stopping. not quite getting enough <laughs> DNA. And if there is enough DNA present, we can make millions of copies of the DNA, which is detected on an instrument and analyzed to create a specific set of numbers that we can then compare to a buckle swab taken from a suspect. So in our report, we said that we got a complete DNA profile off of the evidence. This is that set of numbers that makes up the DNA profile. This set of 16 numbers is actually unique to each individual. So the buckle swab from Marcus Hurd was collected and sent to us, and we right. obtained a DNA profile from him. And then we just do a side-by-side -side comparison of just numbers. That's when we found out that at every one of these locations, Marcus Heard matched when we discovered that we had a match in the Camp Hill, Alabama case. Three stains on her underwear and they all come back to Marcus Heard. Oh, God. It was really one of those moments where you sit back and say, this is why we do what we do.